It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. I just heard the sound check and oh, we are in for a treat today on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Now, for those who don't know, today is Menstrual Hygiene Day. It is a day that is worldwide. It's a worldwide platform that brings together many organizations, government agencies, media, individuals to promote menstrual hygiene management. This day also helps to break the silence and build awareness about the fundamental role that good menstrual hygiene plays in enabling girls to reach reach their full potential. And here to help us unpack the topic of menstruation and good menstrual hygiene, please can we welcome obstetrician and gynecologist Dr. Ilana Johnson. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Expresso and it's such an interesting that it's finally there is a day for it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's one of those topics where a lot of people, they don't discuss it, people are ashamed or embarrassed to actually want to bring it up. Yeah. But it's great that there's a day for us to break the silence. But for those who don't know, what happens to the lady's body when she goes through her menstrual cycle? Yeah, so basically menstruation is a monthly event and it's basically your body preparing itself for a pregnancy every month. And if you don't get pregnant, then you have your period or your menstruation. And why is it that ladies get their period? I'm asking these questions because I yeah. know there are young girls watching. They probably haven't had this conversation with their yeah. parents or they don't have those figures in their life to want to have that conversation with. So basically, it's a, it's a two sort of a two-phase cycle. And the first half of your cycle, your body is preparing and creating an egg. And then ovulation happens sort of mid-cycle. And then if you don't get pregnant or that egg is not fertilized, then eventually you start to bleed. Mm -hmm. well, we and are, that's why you menstruate. That's why we have our, and that's what you call it, your period. Your period. And um, I mean, we are celebrating Menstrual Hygiene Day. So if you have comments or questions, you can always reach us on our social media platforms. Head on over to Facebook. Let us know your comments, your questions. We have Dr. Ilana Johnson with us today to discuss all of this. Now, I know a big question when it was new for me, the concept of getting your period every mm -hmm. month. The big thing you panic about is how much blood does a girl lose? Put so, it that way. Yeah, so everyone thinks it's quite a lot of blood every month, but actually the average woman will only bleed about 30 moles a month. Um, and if you bleed in excess of 80 moles, then it's actually considered a lot. Okay. Yeah. And what should ladies do if it is, you know, a little bit more than usual? If it's a little bit more than usual, if you suspect you're bleeding more than 80 moles um, per month, then you have to go and see your doctor, your GP or your gynae to ask them, is there something that I can do? Is there something wrong? And I know today the focus is on menstrual hygiene mm -hmm. day. So how, why is it so important for the ladies to know that there are special ways for you to take care of everything? Because it is a time in the month when women are bleeding and they feel a little bit more unclean. So it is important to obviously look after yourself. You're also a little bit more prone to um, infections if you don't manage your menstruation in a hygienic fashion. So let's talk about that in a hygienic fashion. What would the correct way to be for the ladies that are going through it for the first time? So it's important just to make sure you have a bath or shower at least once or twice a day during that time. Um, if you're using pads, change them frequently, make sure you don't have any accidents. If you're changing, if you're using tampons, you know, change them a little bit more frequently or a menstrual cup. Um, and make sure that you don't use too many intimate washes and um, irritating things on that area because it can be um, sort of not good for your vaginal area. Okay. And I know a lot of people, like you get, there's a whole aisle. You go into the stores, mm. they have a whole aisle. Yes, you have your pads, you have your tampons, and then they have special wipes, special soaps. Is that something you would recommend? And if you do, you know, should you rather opt for the fragrance ones, the yeah. fragrance-free ones? I mean, I think now is the perfect time to ask someone that deals with knows. these things every single day. Yeah, so most gynies are not a fan of any menstrual hygiene, feminine sort of intimate products because your vagina is supposed to be kept, it's a sort of a self-cleaning organ, mm. um, and soap and water, actually just water is good enough. So we try and stay away from those kinds of things because it is irritating to that area. It's a very sensitive area, um, and it can cause problems. It's a very sensitive sort of ecosystem down there, and you want to keep the pH what it is, what it's supposed to be, and those kinds of things actually interfere with the pH and promote sort of infections from from happening. And that's not what we want. That's, that's not, not what, what we, we want, want at all. And for so I love that you're recommending just water and soap is good enough, sometimes yeah. just water. Yeah. Because I'm thinking about the ladies that don't have access to yeah. the right products, to the right, you know, necess necessities that's yeah. necessary for that time yeah. of the month. So for them, water is good enough. Water is good enough. It's 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 perfectly fine. And then what, you know, 
This is a very personal question, but it's something that I think a lot of ladies don't know. So if they have their period, they've gone to the bathroom, is it true you have to wipe a certain way or is it just, you just go whichever way you would yeah. normally do? I was told you're supposed to wipe down. Yes, exactly. So it's always important for, for sort of hygiene in that area to wipe from front to back so you don't bring the organisms from the back to the front. And that's, you know, one of those basic things you need to learn from when you're a young girl. Um, especially around your menstruation, you know, wipe from front to back, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Well, Dr. Ilana Johnson, we should not going anywhere. We're going to take a quick pause from this conversation. If you've just tuned in for the first time, today is Menstrual Hygiene Day, a very important day to break the silence, break the stigma, and to have the conversations that are necessary to the young girls going through this for the first time. Dr. Ilana is just explaining everything, what's happening to your body, how important it is to look after the hygiene. And if you're watching this and you're not sure what's going on, well, we will be unpacking a little bit more as we continue to celebrate World Menstrual Hygiene Day. It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Today's Tuesday. We're talking all things health, but not only health, focusing on hygiene, because today is World Menstrual Hygiene Day. We are having that awkward discussion. Yes, it is one to be had because that's what today is all about, is breaking the stigma, breaking the silence. And for the young ladies that don't understand their bodies, we have Dr. Ilana Johnson with us. She's an obstetrician and gynecologist. Joining us for this chat today as we want to focus on hygiene. There are a lot of ladies, and I know that not only in South Africa, but the continent Africa, they don't have access to the proper, you know, the pads, the tampons, mm -hmm. the menstrual products that you need, menstruation products that you need. And Ilana, I want to ask you, when it comes to the odor that sometimes is associated with a lady going through her period, what can be done and what is the normal range if there is something like that? Yeah. So obviously you do smell a bit different around the time of your menstruation and that's to be expected, you're bleeding. Um, but the most important thing is to try and make yourself feel as comfortable as possible. And if that means washing more frequently, that's one of the things you can do. Try and stay away, like I said before, away from those feminine hygiene products because they can irritate and cause infection. Um, but the most important thing is to change your, your menstruation product frequently, like your pad or your tampon or your menstrual cup. Um, and dress comfortably, try not to wear tight clothing, which can also promote that smell and make that sort of musty smell. Um, and just yeah, change frequently and, and be hygienic in that time. Okay, so when you say change frequently, yeah. how many hours would you recommend for those who are not sure, for those who are new, or for those that yeah. didn't know? Yeah. So if, you are, if you've decided to go for the pad, how yes. often would you have to change your pads? So I think with pads, obviously you get different absorbency levels as well. And different flows. And different <laughs> flows. Um, but for like an average woman, you should change between two to four hourly. Two to four hourly. And if you feel like you need to change more frequently, then do it. Because if you feel uncomfortable, then you are, you know, just change more frequently. And that smell will then go away. If the smell is really malodorous, if it's really bad, it's probably a problem. Okay. And then you should also seek help for that. Because it shouldn't smell smell offensive it, sh it just has a different smell okay and you will know as a you lady will you will know this yeah. does not smell right yeah when it comes to changing the frequency of those who opt for the tampon yeah so tampons you can also change between you know two to four hourly or four to six hourly depending on the absorbency and how heavy your flow is and obviously it changes from day to day as most women will know mm. and for those who opt for the cup the cup is new to me but it's been around yeah. for a while it's actually wonderful because obviously it's environmentally friendly um, and the cup you can keep in for up to 12 hours um, you know and if, unless it falls up and it starts to leak but actually it can stay in for up to 12 hours. Okay, so that's also the cup option that yeah. is available. Now we have a couple of questions from social media and if you have a question, you can always let us know. Head on over to our Expresso Facebook page, Dr. Ilana Johnson, she'll still be with us for another segment. But one of the questions here is, what do you, um, sorry, it's, it's over here. It should, um, should menstruating women wash inside of their vaginas? That's one of the questions that came through. Yeah, so, by washing inside, if you're talking about like douching and that, it's also not recommended. Just using, you know, water and, and a hand just to just clean inside is fine. But don't push things up into the vagina because it's not hygienic to do that. Okay. And we also received another one saying, they say you should not take baths during periods. Is this true? 
It's not true. Um, you can bath during your period, but once again, stay away from heavily scented bath products and things that can irritate that area. So try and just have a bath with as, as natural a product as you can, and don't use heavy bubble baths and scented things because it will irritate. Okay. Well, Dr. Lana's not going anywhere, so if you have a comment or a question, head on over to the Expresso Facebook page. She's here to help us as we celebrate the day that is World Hygiene Menstrual Day, a day for us to break the stigma and have these awkward conversations because it's necessary. It's absolutely necessary for us to have it, and it's an important one. So head on over to Facebook, let us know your comments, and use that hashtag Expresso Show. It's my feel good birthday show. Well, we're continuing our con conversation as today is World Hygiene Menstrual Day. And yes, we are asking those uncomfortable and awkward questions because today is exactly for that, for us to answer them. And we have obstetrician and gynecologist, Dr. Ilana Johnson with us in studio. She's the pro. I mean, who better to ask than her when it comes to how to look after yourself, especially for the ladies that are going through their monthly cycle. Now, Dr. Ilana, earlier you mentioned that, you know, odor is a normal part but there's a specific odor that is not right now one of the questions i want to ask you is why are women more vulnerable or is it are women more vulnerable to infections during their menstrual cycle yeah so some women will report an increase in frequency of like yeast infections around their period and that's mostly got to do with the hormonal changes that happen in our bodies during that time so most of the time women will in report an increase in um, infections just the week before the period because of the hormonal surges that are happening um, and then also if you're unhygienic and looking after your menstruation you can obviously have more infections if you're not changing your pads or tampons frequently um, or if um, you're also sort of sensitive to the product you can also get a little bit of infection okay and then let's talk about something that is quite interesting toxic shock syndrome mm. What exactly is it and who is prone to it? So toxic shock syndrome is quite a serious illness. And it's a very rare thing that happens, but it has been linked to people who do not change their tampons frequently. Um, and that means leaving it for a very long time. And it sort of causes a multi-organ issue in your body, um, which can lead to death even, um, because you have this sort of septic shock that happens in your body because of it. Okay. And it's basically got to do with a tampon that's inside that doesn't get changed and then it causes infection. So the solution to avoiding toxic shock syndrome is hygiene. Good hygiene menstrual is hygiene. Key. Hygiene is key, change your tampon, change your tampon frequently. Exactly. Now, and if it smells, take it out. If it smells, take it out. And seek now, help. Ilana, we have a few questions that mm. came through on our Facebook page. And I'm going <coughs> to ask you the first one. Lerato asked us, good morning. Can I ask, is it normal for you to go for seven days on your period? So she's asking about the duration mm -hmm. of her yeah. period. So yes, um, the normal period can range between two and seven days. And usually if it's longer than seven days, you might want to speak to your, your healthcare provider to ask them, is there something going on? Okay, and she's also asking, what are the comfortable pads to use? <laughs> yeah, so that's quite a difficult question because different people feel comfortable with different products. But um, the most important thing is to remain dry and to be comfortable. So whatever you can find that suits you and make sure, making sure that it doesn't also irritate you. Yeah, and Lerato, don't be scared to chat to your girlfriends about it. We off, I mean, there, if you go into the store, there are so many different products available, those with wings, mm -hmm. those without wings, those with the little patterns on it. There really is something for you to try around until you find that one that you're really comfortable with. So Lerato, thank you for your question. Uh, Madre here says, I would like to know what type of pad is best to use because everything I use gives me a rash. So she's prone yeah. to a little bit of a rash. Yeah, so that's so that's often a very, very big problem. And um, the rash could be related to staying too wet, it's not absorbent enough. Okay. Or it could be that she's actually allergic to the ingredients in the pad. So try and maybe change to something more natural or even try changing your product to a tampon or a menstrual cup to, to take away the, the sort of friction between the pad and the that area. Okay, so we have one here from Maklako. I would like to ask you this question. She says on the 28th of April, I had a miscarriage and she says, I went to the hospital. Now my question is, is it normal to have my menstruation right now? And why does my womb feel so heavy and painful right now as I am on my period? So the 28th of April, it's less than a month yeah. ago. Yes. I'm so sorry, Maklako, to hear. Yeah. So yeah, obviously after a loss, your menstrual cycle is a little bit different um, and it might take six weeks, two months even to, to normalize. 
Um, and obviously, if it feels, if it's pain, if the bleeding is too heavy, or if it's small, it's funny, you need to go and see your doctor. Um, but yeah, your cycle is different right after you've had a pregnancy or a loss. Okay, so I feel like that was quite a heavy question. Yeah. Like, oh, our heart goes out to you. Thank you for sharing your question. I hope Dr. Ilana's question answered helped you some bit. Now, to wrap up our topic, it is Menstrual Hygiene Day. I feel like we shouldn't just leave it for one day to have these type of discussions. But if you can leave the ladies with some peace of mind, knowing that, okay, I'm doing the right thing, or ooh, maybe I should you know, sharpen up my hygiene skills, what would your parting advice be for the ladies that are new to womanhood? Um, I think the most important thing from a guy in perspective is don't fiddle too much. Just, you know, use the basics. Don't add extra things because it will irritate the vulval area. Um, and just be hygienic during that time. Change frequently. Um, wear loose clothing and just try and have as little interference as possible. It's actually a self-cleansing organ. Okay. Well, there we have it from Dr. Ilana Johnson. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for and of course, me. if you have any more questions, feel free to head on over to the Expresso Facebook page and use that hashtag Expresso Show.